Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and I thought I'd do another little DIY rainy day project for you today. So you might recall a little while ago we made this, which is our recycled bottle cordage. Um, and everyone seemed to quite like that, so I thought I'd continue in that vein. Um, and as part of that project, we were left with these, just the tops of our bottles with a little bit left over. Um, and basically, I figured these are quite useful, you can recycle these as well. Um, and what I'm going to be making today are little waterproof containers. You can use them for seasoning, you can use them as match safes, um, lots of little things. They're really, really sort of versatile. Um, and I thought I'd just share with you how I would normally do that. Um, so to start off with, I'm going to try and make this quite a short video. So I'm going to throw a few uh, clips up here in the corner. So first thing you want to do with these is take off this little piece here. Um, now you'll see there's kind of like a little flange up here and you get that on most bottle tops. Um, and the easiest way I've found for this is to use a hacksaw um, and just cut down. So you'll see up here in the corner me cutting through this with a hacksaw. Um, it really doesn't take all that long. Um, and what you're left with is a nice sort of flat lip. Um, now once that's been done, the next thing to move over to is a piece of sandpaper and again I'll put some footage up here to show you but just put your sandpaper down on a flat surface, work it round um, until you've ground off all the way to that lip and also make sure you kind of rough that lip up a little bit as well um, because that will help with the bonding. Um, now with all those things done, what you're going to be left with, um, and I'll skip the camera over in a second, but you'll be left with two of these nice and flush that will fit together. Um, and then you want to think about either bonding it or putting something in to separate it. The separation can be quite important, so I use these for things like salt and pepper in my cook kit. Um, and really all you're going to do, and I'll give you a, a proper look at this in a second, is take another bottle cut a little piece out and that's going to become the um, the barrier if you like between these two caps. Now just give me one second I'll move over and I'll show you where we've got to so far. Right then guys so five minutes worth of work and it really has only just been that has left us with these two little pieces here so your end bottle caps um, nice and roughed up but flush fitting with the sandpaper and also a little piece of the side wall. I've trimmed it down into a rough circle. Um, what you sometimes need to do with this is manipulate it a bit. So you might need to kind of, where, you, where there's a natural curve to the bottle like this, for example, you may just need to roll it back on itself, hold it there for a minute or two, just to get that bend out. It doesn't have to be perfectly flat, but it does help. Um, and then really all we're left to do is bonding these together. Now, I've seen this done many different ways. Um, I was watching a YouTube video the other day and someone was using um, just standard household silicon, you know, things sort of um, uh, sealing in baths and things like that. I've never tried it. I've used super glue before with some success. Today I'm using epoxy just because I happen to have it. Um, now, this is a fairly cheap and inexpensive one. And like most epoxies, you're just using a 50-50 mix get that in there um, off camera I have just whittled myself a quick spreader stirrer thing and what you want to do is give your epoxy a really good mix it does go off quite quickly so you need to work relatively fast and also make sure you're in a nice ventilated place like my workshop I've got the door wide open I'm only using this for a short period picking up some of the dye from this uh, bit of cardboard as well which is interesting and you just want to make sure you get a good even layer across all of your surfaces and obviously try not to get it on your fingers So once you've got the first one done, that will go straight down on top of your piece of uh, sidewall. And the tricky part is actually getting it to line up when you do the second one. It can be a bit of a faff. Probably should have done a little bit more epoxy, truth be told. Let me make another quick batch up. Yep. 
and again as I say you only really need a very small amount of this just enough to cover all your surfaces so with that done I'm going to move this out of the way that little trail off there and what you want to do is join these two together as best as you can you do get a little bit of time to work with this which is quite nice and if you're anything like me it will just really annoy you if this turns out to be uh, slightly off center it's just the sort of thing I always notice and I've got this little simple clamp here I mean you can use anything you can use a vise um, you know you can put it on a flat surface and put something heavy on there um, I've got these and they seem to fit really really nicely um, and all I'm gonna do is leave this for probably Ooh, I don't know maybe an hour probably doesn't need quite that long but I'm gonna leave it for an hour I'm gonna let this set and I'll come back and we'll do the trimming and finishing off right then guys so we are pretty much done I did the last few bits off camera which I will show you up here um, and all it really involves is just trimming round the um, the excess of the internal wall. Uh, now I normally use a pair of scissors, um, but you can use a knife as well, you know, just to gently trim round it, get the excess off. And then I normally move over to a piece of sandpaper just to round off all those rough edges. Um, and that is pretty much it. Now, as I said, it's a nice little rainy day project. It doesn't really take too much to do. It's all recycled materials, barring the glue. Um, and this is what you're left with. And unfortunately, I don't know how well this picks up on camera, um, but I must have moved it slightly in the clamp. So it's not 100% on center, which I know is gonna bug me a little bit. Um, but essentially, you've created, well, in this one, two watertight containers, I suppose. Um, so you can just see in there this little piece of plastic um, now something like this what would I use it for well I would probably put salt and pepper in here or different spices and herbs for cooking that's my mainstay uh, but you can really use it for anything you can think of um, if you don't put this little internal wall in here um, these make quite good match safes um, you will either have to cut the matches down a little bit so that they'll fit um, alternatively um, you know, you can make these slightly bigger depending on what bottles you use. And what I wanted to say was that this works with pretty much any type of plastic bottle. Um, I can't think of it with one that doesn't have the little flange round here, which is obviously what you use to seal them together. Um, now, over here in the UK, I mean, that can be anything from kind of, um, you know, mineral water bottles, Lucasade, um, you know fizzy drinks you name it if it's in a plastic bottle generally speaking you will be able to find this little flange and seal them together um, other parts of the world I mean I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same all over um, I know that Gatorade bottles have these um, you know it's just the one sort of um, non UK standard drinks bottle that I'm familiar with so you can do it with those as well and bear in mind that you know you can get some bottles that have got really wide lids so you can get some, quite a lot of stuff in here um, depending on what you're using it for how much you want to keep in there um, I mean these filled with salt and pepper for me will generally last me quite a long time I haven't got to think about refilling them for a fair while um, if you're going out for a short weekender or something I mean you know, because these are for drinks bottles these are completely waterproof so I've had cooking oil in these um, I've had some slightly larger ones where I've had milk in them where I, I thought I'd take some fresh milk with me um, I've actually seen one person I, ne I didn't never found out what the bottles were but they were really really kind of wide mouthed you know it must have been maybe this kind of size I think they may have been for a um, like a cooking sauce or something maybe um, but they managed to get eggs in them um, so they put two of them together didn't have the bit inside they managed to get two raw eggs in there um, which for the following morning at camp they were able to use for scrambled eggs which was a really nice idea I thought um, so yeah just something for you to think about guys I hope it's useful I hope it's something you might try and uh, you know make yourself at some point because it's dead simple to do um, and that's it for today so comments and questions in the box below hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more and I hope you'll all join me next time cheers guys